Testing. I'm uh, Doug Porter. I'm Deputy Chief Economist with the Bank of Montreal. Hello, uh, Doug. Um, thanks for helping with the Financial Literacy Project. I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Uh, we're dealing with a problem in Canada where young people are coming out of university, coming out of school with a lot of debt, and so that really they need more information on how to not end up in so much debt. Do you have any comment on that? Well, you know, of course, in today's extremely low interest rate environment, there's uh, there's quite a temptation to uh, to take on debt. But I think, uh, arguably, the most important thing that a young person starting to can do is really, you know, set, take some time to, to set a budget. And I don't mean necessarily trying to figure out, you know, where every single dollar goes, you know, what, you know, that they're going to spend, you know, a certain percent on groceries every single week. It's basically to break out a, a broad budget in terms of what they can afford to spend on various things and, and allow for some savings. Because I think the most important thing in the first few years of, uh, of a young person's work career is to build up a small nest egg just to protect themselves against unforeseen events and for shocks and uh, you, you know bas basically for those little things in life that uh, that you can't necessarily prepare for the, the best thing to do is to to set aside a, a, a small nest egg to uh, to protect themselves and and also what importantly that does is sets the mode on a path where they are effectively spending less than they're making and that you know it's important to get on that path uh, even, even at a very early stage in life is there another thing that comes up I mean when we both went to school came out of university um, a lot of us didn't have credit cards but I know from my experience that both my kids were basically handed credit cards the first day of university now credit cards are both good and bad. Can you discuss both sides of those, please? Yeah, and I think that's really true of almost any kind of debt that you can think of. I mean, in, in general, it is it is a positive thing if it is used appropriately. You have to be cautious and respect debt, and the same goes with a credit card. I mean, obviously, it uh, you know is very convenient. It uh, you know can help uh, obviously pay for things at, at a certain point in time that you might not be able to otherwise. But it is very very critical that you treat a credit card with a great deal of respect and remember that the interest rates or the borrowing rates on a credit card are exceptionally high and they're really not meant to be a long-term lending vehicle whatsoever. They're just meant for very short-term purchases that you can you know, pay back as, uh, as, as quickly as possible. So, you know, I guess my ba ba essential word of advice with the credit card is treat that debt almost as, as if it's cash, you know, as, as if it's going to come out of your account uh, the, the very next day. And you, you really have to do, you really do have to treat a credit card with a great deal of respect. Um, you know, there are there are positives to it, um, but uh, but you have to treat it with a great deal of caution. Another thing that's kind of interesting, uh, just talking about the job market. There's a report that came out uh, a few weeks ago, basically saying that Canada is one of the very few Western countries in the world that doesn't do research into what sort of jobs are available. So what happens is students go to university and they take programs or courses and then when they're done there's there's nothing available for them do you have any comments on that situation well yeah and uh, you know of course uh, a lot of uh you know, a lot of your job search really just boils down to studying the market on, on your own. And, uh, you know, you can seek out mentors and or, or even, uh, you know, older older siblings or, or even your parents, uh, friends. You know, basically just try to keep uh, attuned to uh, to the job market as, as best as possible. It does it does take a lot of work. There's, there's no question about it. But, you know, the interesting thing about Canada's job market right now is even though we have an unemployment rate that's about 7.5%, there is a lot of talk about skill shortages in uh, you know whether it's in certain industries or even within certain regions there there are you know a number of areas within the job market that have a crying need for uh, for young people to get to go into and it really doesn't take that much research to figure out where those uh, you know where those sectors and regions are I mean just on on regions clearly the uh, you know the, the region of the country that's been the strongest growing in recent years and likely will be over the next 10 years have uh, have been the commodity heavy portions of the country especially the prairie provinces Alberta is Saskatchewan, to a lesser extent, uh, British Columbia has seen some of the strongest job growth in recent years and are likely to over the next five to ten years as well. And, you know, and of course, in terms of industries, where we've seen uh, very strong job growth in the last ten years has been almost anything related to the resource sector and almost anything related to the construction industry. Now, it's not clear that the construction sector will continue to grow as strong as it has over the last five years or so, but the resource industry will. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really doesn't take a whole lot of research to... Uh, you know, to, to basically uh, find out these uh, these areas that are expected to grow relatively quickly. And also, finally, I guess, the, the market really does give you a lot of information. The, the, those sectors that are paying relatively high wages now 
the reason why they're paying high wages is because there there probably is a shortage of that that skill, and so the wages in that sector have been have been raised or bid up to uh, to, to basically try to prompt people into into going into that industry or sector. So, Doug, uh, we've mentioned three things here. One is get yourself onto some sort of budget where there's a saving component. We've also talked about the risk of using credit cards and the sort of debt that young people can get into. And we've we've mentioned the job market. There are jobs out there that uh, planning might help. So, do you have any other comments to to young people out there? Well, I guess you know one of the, one of the most important things I think as uh, you know as as a young person is is basically it, it it you know it's not as complicated as it sounds. It it doesn't take that much work to uh, to educate yourself in terms of a lot of basic financial matters. Uh, you know there are some you know very accessible. Uh, available books out there that you know are not particularly lengthy or hard to wade through that can really help uh, set you out on a good path and it, and it is very important to uh, to get into good financial habits when you uh, when you first start out in in your working career or, and when when you leave school um, you know just just some minor modifications when you first start out uh, re really do set the stage for uh, you know for a long uh, healthy financial life uh, just just by uh, you know setting reasonable goals when uh, when you first begin okay. Thanks a lot, Doug. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure.